everyone. Hello. Welcome back to my channel. I am always so very happy to find you here. I do upload on Thursdays, but you will be alerted by that if you subscribe and you should subscribe. Um, otherwise, just kind of go to Sherry Lewis Speaks Truth on YouTube and find my uploads every Thursday. This particular uh, upload is part three of three regarding the topic of soul synchronicity. And um, so this is going to summarize it, uh, summarize the prior two. So if you haven't seen those yet, please go back and take a look so you can catch yourself up and you can get a good understanding as to what I'm referring to. So let's let me give you a little backdrop as to how I ended up with on the topic of a three part on this one particular topic of soul synchronicity. When I do my videos, I typically do, we, we do what, four, four, three or four. We, we've gotten better. It doesn't take as many takes, but um, there's usually three or four and then we fine tune and edit and decide which one is best. It was difficult to decide between parts one and parts two. But by the time we chose part one, there a lot of different comments about the topic came up. So instead of dismissing the, the, the so-called runner-up to what we uploaded, we made it part two. And then some of the same comments came also part two. So this is part three, and I'm gonna be moving on from that topic. But this is part three to kind of summarize and answered three key questions that kept coming up in the comments. And I believe that maybe, well, next month is April coming tomorrow, actually, yeah? April is tomorrow. So I think I'm gonna start having my comments public now. It's been all eight months now. I think, I think I've gotten an idea, you know, and I'm moving forward, but I'm a process person. So I have to, process things a certain way for myself. Um, but at any rate, if you haven't seen part one and part two, please go back. They're, they're very short. I try and keep everything about 15 minutes, no more than, and hopefully this will be also. Uh, just to kind of summarize, when we discuss the issue of soul, I'm referring to the soul as I look at it, S-O-U-L self-care, oneness, unity, and love. Self-care, oneness, unity, and love. That is the soul of a person sharing to a soul of another person, whatever that relationship is. Friends, neighbors, lovers. And it's another thing. We often think our soulmate is our love mate. And he or she is, but we have soulmates and friends. We have soulmates in, in coworkers. We have soulmates and classmates people who we just seem to connect with. And I did go over in part two, where I said, regarding a relationship, where there is a man, whatever your relationship is, there is a, an intimacy. A soulmate is someone you're connecting to much higher than you have a good connection. I almost think when you say we connect, we connect, I, I think that's kind of lowering, lowering the dynamic of a true soulmate. That's just my opinion. So having said that, the one of the questions that occurred is how do we know that that person is our soulmate? And my response to that is, your wokeness will tell you. Or your damage will ruin it. One of the two. So for example, I have said many times in many prior uploads, I just can't stop saying videos. <laughs> I have said many times before that a person that behaves in negativizing another person, treatment of another person. You meant to treat them negatively in a way of dismissing them, devaluing them, dishonoring them, ghosting them, all of that. That's low negative hurt energy. You couldn't even do it if you were well. 
So that, that identifies it. Something in that person is still damaged because a well hole, W-H-O-L-E, W-H-O-L-E, hole is on 100%. A whole person would never do it. There's no need to do it. They're well. But a person with a hole, H-O-L-E, a hole in their soul, like an opening hole, they're damaged. That's, that's how it gets poured in there. They're damaged. They're hurt. Now, what happens a lot of times, the person say, I ain't man, you know, and oh, that's ego. Especially men with respect. Especially men. Ain't nobody did nothing to me. I could, okay, that's machuism. Everything has a name and it can be defined. So when you do that, it's almost like you want to say, I protected myself, I can't be hurt. That's pride. See all of this. Work on you. Work on yourself and it's okay. But work on you so that you can present yourself to someone worthy of you and you of them. That's why you met her or him before and you ruined it. Respectful, respect, let me sit up. <laughs> I love you, respectfully. It was your hurt part, it was your damage part. So that's how you know it's a soul. A soul, self-care, oneness, unity and love is ready to receive. They're looking for the next person they meet, whether it's a business partner or friend, they're always on what I call woke mode alert mode. Why is this person showing up in my life? It's my job to know why. I need to value that. Did they come to help me? Or did I come to help them? Or are we here to work together in fine tuning the universe? Whatever it is, you don't have to look at it so broad, but you should recognize. And if you don't even know how, that's your answer. Work on you some, respectfully. We're all a work in progress, WIP. We're all a work in progress. But if you, with a hole, damage in, hole in your soul, if you travel back to all the relationships, whatever type they are, that you keep swimming to the next one and the next one, it's because you haven't fixed that hole. And it's like pouring water in a bucket and it just keeps draining out and draining out. And you haven't fixed it because you haven't fixed you so fix you and it's okay all my videos say fix you i say fix you because no one no one wants to acknowledge their part i can see it in you him her them they over there but not you so fix you and it's okay but don't lose another worthy person for being in your life because you're so damaged, not knocking anyone down, but you're so damaged to see the universe has been kind to you, to send you a rescue, whatever it is, work, friends, again, I'm not going to keep going over that, whatever, it, I'm talking about the whole, W-H-O-L-E, the whole fullness of a relationship, okay, that part. The other question that comes up is, when do I know when to stop either waiting or hoping or fixing that person so they'll come around to see? And, you know, when, when do I stop doing the work and wait for them? You'll know when, if you woke up. Because what you don't want to do is make this mistake that so many, I'd say most of us say, after all this time, yes, souls don't work in time, souls work in seasons. So right there, go learn some more. No, respectfully, don't do it. Respectfully, don't, respectfully. Soul synchronicity has nothing to do with time. Let me tell you why. If it had to do with time, you would have met them right when you needed to meet them, wanted to meet them all these many months or years or times before, but you didn't because either they weren't available for you or they weren't ready for you. Maybe they, maybe 
the universe was doing work on making them more presentable. Maybe they had a weight problem and you had an issue with people that had weight problems and they got out there and they don't have all of that. You know, we don't know what we don't know. So that's the serendipitous piece. All of this mystery is not for us to know. What we need to do is to come ready. Come authentic. Come woke. Come raised in your vibration. Come open in your mindfulness. Come open in your heart. Come pure in your soul. Come compassionately. Come without the weight of your damage. Because that poor person has done all the work not to inherit it. Why should they inherit the you that someone else messed up? The you before you got messed up is who they were looking for. But now here you are, still mad about whatever happened in a relationship and bring it there. And that is called, we, we want to call it baggage. But it's damage. And we don't want to say damage because nobody wants to say, oh, look at all this. I'm not damaged. All this. Everybody has something in our lives in which we are working on. Everyone. So stay alert, stay woke, do your work, and be deserving of the person. And if the universe has released you and your season is over, you will know. You will know. Even if they show back up now and your season is over, now the choice becomes yours. Make, be careful with the choice. They did the work. They did the work for you. So at least, again, keep the open heart. They did the work for you. Don't be so mad about what they did. Remember, what they did, whatever they did, they did it from a place of hurt. The other day here in California, two days ago, I believe, there was a dog rescue in a ravine. Everybody in my family are dog lovers, but particularly me. Well, I shouldn't say, but particularly me, but they all know I love some dogs. And my mom called and she said, are you watching the news? Are you watching the news? They're airing it live. And I said, I can't watch it. I don't know how it's going to end up. I don't want to see what if they can't rescue the dog. Ah, I can't. I couldn't even watch it. That's my hurt. That's my pain. I can't, I can't see it. I can't. I need to know. I can't be in the, I, I couldn't be in the, the drama of it. So there my mom was watching. It was airing live. And then she called me back. And when she, I said, call me back when it's over and tell me. And she called me back and she said, I answered the phone. She said, they rescued him. I was, oh, I was so happy. It was like that. So the point I'm making by that is my mom shared with me when they rescued the dog, the dog bit the handler, of course, because the dog is in pain. He's in, he's fright. He's shed. So these things happen. When a person bites at you, snaps at you, you have to remember they're, they're in trauma at that time. They're in trauma. You still need to be a part of the rescue team. You were sent there. Be heroic, just like those handlers were. Everybody's rooting for you. Everybody's rooting for you. And some, like me, can't bear to watch it because I only want you to rise above in your awakeness, rise above in your mindfulness, rise above in your vibration and live your best life and get out of the ravine that got you caught up because of some damage and some mistake and some accident that happened and make the best out of it. And that's what these three parts on soul synchronicity has been all about. Give everybody a pass. Be compassionate. Be understanding. Be loving. Be kind. Be purposeful. Be forgiving. And I love you.
Bye. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye. I love y'all. Bye. Oh yeah. This this video is dedicated. I'm sorry. This video is dedicated to my godmother. Um, she always called me Ladybug, and I love her. Rest in heaven, Garretine Mitchell. Bye. <laughs>